time to uh, work on this. So if you want to help by recommendations are welcome. Um, if you want to recommend tools, that would be awesome. If you want to, especially if you want to work on scripts to add distributions, thank you so much because that, that's the most time consuming thing I'm sure that I ever work on. Um, if you have tools that you are writing that run portably, let me know. I'll check into it. Um, yeah, I mean, a, anything you can do to help out. I have a forum, post everything on there. Uh, I'll get Q&A in just like two seconds. Is that cool? Okay. Actually, I think that's the next slide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was good, good timing. You were, you were right on about that. So, again, uh, the pre-release is at the Hackers for Charity booth. Um, it, you can get it fully working. There is a lot of new stuff on this version. Um, I know none of this was actually like, this is how you hack into this thing. But I did provide a whole lot of tools um, and some documentation. So if you're starting off the bat, this is a great thing to mess around with. And uh, yeah, if the, if the HFC guys want to come up real quick, um, we're going to have some uh, free t-shirts. Anybody raise a hand? Hacks for Charity t-shirt? You guys want to come up? Yeah. Uh, raise your hand if this presentation was awesome. Yay! All right. I had to catch you when you're off guard. <laughs> All right. So, so while everybody's looking around, the Hacks for Charity booth is again on the other side of these walls, all the way in the back. Come check it out. If the T-shirts don't fit, we'll swap it out for you. You got the. Uh, All right, my last thing before I'm going to do a little bit of Q&A. We are doing some auctions there. We got some really cool stuff signed by a lot of cool people. We're auctioning off stuff like this. Um, come, it's all for charity. Uh, we're asking for any kind of donations you want to give, but these are uh, bidding on. We've got a lot of stuff on there that's really cool. Some, of course, one of the one of the kind items. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Um, I guess I have a minute for Q&A or five for Q&A. Um, but I'll probably head over there after I answer this question. So if you want to get the new version and want to talk to me, I'll be over there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Looked into what? I'm oh, sorry. So the problem, the difficulty, he was asking about, um, he said he loses thumb drives all the time and uh, was wondering about encrypting a thumb drive. It, yes, you can. The problem is the, it depends on your environment. If you're Windows only, you can say, hey, you can slap TrueCrypt on there, encrypt it, and that's great. But if you want to go to the Windows side or OS X side, then, you know, you have to get that software working and unencrypting it the same way. So because it's portable, that presents a problem. So yes, you could encrypt a hard drive, or a thumb drive just like a hard drive, but because the idea with this is that you can run it on all these different platforms, that makes it a little more difficult. Yes? I don't know about, uh, since that's the bootloader system, I think that modify, uh, it might work on there, I'm not positive. But you have to, you have to run that through Windows as far as I know. He was asking about the TrueCrypt bootloader and that, that might be an option. I've never looked into that. So then you could have it in the bootloader, encrypt it and then unencrypt it uh, at runtime. But then again, you have to, if you're considering the portable application side of things, you have to unencrypt the whole thing. So since it's both, it would be great. If you guys want to look into that, I think that would be an awesome option. Um, yeah. Um, for the, uh, for the yeah. Um, is it scriptable so like you can say tell it on through a command line? It's not right now, but that's a good option. This is basically we just finished this and I've it's really prototype testing, but that's good. It's actually it's a visual basic script. Um, so you can modify it any way you want and it'll run on any system. The 32 versus 64 bit, whatever, it's visual basic script. Yeah. What I have for the, actually the Katana portable pops up as the auto run. Um, so it, the, like the portal applications, if you suggest yes to the auto run, that pops up first. Um, I could maybe look into adding that, but yeah, that's a good point. If I could get that running in the auto run, it'd probably make more people more conscious. Yeah. Yeah. The, 
That's a good point. He said he, you can run the auto run and it will work before the drive is running, but I don't know. I don't trust that in, as much as once it's physically in, I just consider malware able to access it. So, you know, I, it might be good, but it might not be the absolute perfect way for doing it. But it is an option. You could do that the first thing off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. And there are actually USB write blocking hardware that you can buy that's not like $100. It's not terribly expensive. The SD ones? So it, it makes it read only? Oh, okay. He was, the gentleman here was saying that uh, there are SD card ones and this should run off of any flash disk, hard drive, whatever. You can install it to your base system if you want. Everything should work there. But uh, you can buy SD card reader write blockers that for like 30 bucks. So I didn't know that. that that's pretty good. Is it really? Oh, yeah, that might be a good option. If the, if, so if you can get a USB adapter for it, for the USB, for a write blocker, for uh, the SD cards, if you get a USB adapter, then makes it more universal. So, yeah, that seems like a cool option. All right, I think I'm going to head over to the uh, HFC booth. If you guys have more questions, you want to get the pre release, um, we'll see you there. <laughs>